Mr. Adams, this is Lisa. Are you going to sign into PrimeGov or voice vote? I am trying to. I'm, I'm part okay. way in there. I'm looking. Uh, okay. I'm just clicking on the light meeting now. So. Thank you. Let's see if it works. Okay, I have the agenda up, so I think I'm good. Well, you have to go in a live meeting. I did that. Okay. I think. Yes, you are in. I yeah, see. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, shows, it, it displays the agenda. That's what's displayed. So, Mark is Kim Lowe logged in. Well, she is logged in the Prime Gov, but she is not yet on. Yeah, Zoom. I didn't see her on Zoom yet. So. Oh yeah, yes, she is. She is on Zoom. Oh okay. And Ms. Morales is now on Zoom. Okay, yeah, I see. Ms. Morales, will you be joining us on PrimeGov? Or will you be voice voting? You need to do star six to unmute. Hi, Sue. Are you joining us from Florida? Yes, I am. Well, welcome back. Thank you. Sending you some sunshine. We have sunshine today. We haven't had for a while, but we have sun today. Thanks for sending it. It's, it's actually what, Sue, it's actually one of those absolutely beautiful fall days in Oklahoma. Oh, I love fall in Oklahoma. And I like winter in Naples. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, I'm showing that it's uh, 10 a.m. I think we have a quorum with, uh, I think there's six of us um, who are logged in. Lisa can probably confirm that or you could. Are we ready to begin or should we wait a few minutes? I'm sorry, you could begin by reading your script, Mr. Chair. Okay, can everybody hear me? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, thanks for joining us for the MAPS3 Citizens Advisory Board video conference meeting. Do have a few announcements to make regarding the uh, video conference meeting. If the video conference is disconnected at any time during the meeting, the meeting shall be stopped and reconvened once the audio video connection is restored. If communications are unable to be restored within 15 minutes, items remaining for consideration will be continued at 11.30 a.m. today, September 24, 2020, via video conference. The agenda and documents are located on OKC.gov. To speak on a certain agenda item, please call in advance of the meeting to 405-297-3467 or text your request in advance of the meeting to 405-205-4195. Include your name, the agenda item, number, and the reason you would like to speak. Please submit your request to uh, prior to the beginning of the meeting to avoid receiving your request after the item has been considered. City staff will attempt to submit requests received during the meeting to process them to the meeting chair. To speak under comments by board staff and citizens, please call 405-297-3467 or text 405-205-4195. Please list your name, address, phone number, and the subject on which you wish to address the board. Uh, do we have a quorum uh, for the meeting? Yes, sir. All right, let's call the uh, meeting to order then. 
Um, and Ms. Morales will be voting um, voice. Okay, thank you, Mark. Thank you. Uh, item two on the agenda, some uh, resolutions of recognition of service. Let's take them up individually. The first one is uh, regarding our dear friend and former colleague who's joining us today, uh, Susan Hooper. Uh, David or Mark, do you want to introduce the resolution? I will read it, sir. Whereas Susan J. Hooper was an original member of the MAPS-3 Citizens Advisory Board appointed March 30th, 2010, and whereas Susan J. Hooper was appointed by the mayor of the city of Oklahoma City and thereafter confirmed to serve as vice chair of the MAPS-3 Convention Center Subcommittee on August 3rd, 2010, and confirmed to serve as chair of the MAPS-3 Trails and Sidewalks Subcommittee on November 16th, 2010, by the City Council of Oklahoma City. And whereas Susan J. Hooper is a noted civic volunteer and has a keen interest in advocacy for the advancement of education and the revitalization of the city's central core. And whereas Susan J. Hooper has focused her career on education as a teacher, principal and educational consultant. And whereas recently retired from a career in education, Susan J. Hooper has relocated to North Fort Myers, Florida. And whereas Susan J. Hooper prepared, performed her duties as a board member and subcommittee chair and vice chair with excellence and in the best interest of Oklahoma City and the MAPS-3 Citizens Advisory Board, MAPS-3 Trails and Sidewalks Subcommittee and MAPS-3 Convention Center Subcommittee and she will be greatly missed. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the MAPS-3 Citizens Advisory Board and MAPS-3 Convention Center Subcommittee that they do hereby recognize and commend Susan J. Hooper for her contributions as a member of the MAPS-3 Citizens Advisory Board, MAPS-3 Convention Center Subcommittee, and MAPS-3 Trails and Sidewalks Subcommittee, and for her valued public service. Well, shall we adopt the resolution? Is there a motion? So move. Second. Any uh, discussion? Other than to uh, commend Susan, uh, I think I speak for all of us uh, today, how much we uh, appreciate your uh, service, your comradeship uh, uh, during the time that you're on the uh, the advisory board, and uh, I think we uh, heartily commend you, uh, as the resolution says, for, for what you've done for us. So, any other comments or discussion? We'll leave the city open for you. <laughs> we'll miss you, Susan. Thank you. We'll definitely miss you, Susan, and we are all jealous of you being in Florida. <laughs> uh, thanks, for, thanks for everything. All right, if there are no further uh, comments, uh, shall we uh, vote? The, the motion is to adopt the resolution. Um, if you will vote electronically, and then uh, Lisa, if you will uh, get a voice vote from uh, Dean. Lisa, Lisa Shriver, can you uh, get a voice vote from Dean Morales? Let me see what's going on. I'm not hearing Lisa. He appears to be on and not muted. how do you vote and we'll just move on yes absolutely yes 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 okay thank you uh the the second part of this uh 
Uh, item two of the agenda is a resolution of recognition regarding uh, Lance Musgrave. Mark, would you uh, please uh, read the resolution? Yes. Whereas Lance Musgrave was hired by the city of Oklahoma City on October 27, 1987, as a management and budget specialist in the Office of Management and Budget, and whereas Lance Musgrave was quickly promoted to a management specialist for the Public Works Department in April 1989. And whereas after the bombing of the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building in April 1995, Lance Musgrave was appointed Federal Programs Manager in the City Manager's Office, where he managed 39 million in federal grants to revitalize the Murrah bombing area to include the acquisition of properties for the Oklahoma City National Memorial. And whereas during his service with the city of Oklahoma City, Lance Musgrave was promoted to business manager of the Oklahoma City Fire Department, where he was responsible for financial planning, reviewed facility maintenance and improvements at over 40 fire stations, and supervised applications for federal assistance associated with response to disasters. And whereas in November 2011, Lance Musgrave was appointed assistant program manager, business manager of the MAPS office, where he was responsible for the operating and capital budgets, as well as preparing cash flow reports to ensure funds were available for many of the largest construction projects in the city's history, including the River Sports Rapids facility, the MAPS 3 Convention Center, and Scissortail Park. And whereas Lance Musgrave retired on September 3rd, 2020, with nearly 33 years of service to the citizens of Oklahoma City. Now therefore be it resolved by the MAPS 3 Citizens Advisory Board that they do hereby recognize and thank Lance Musgrave for his service and dedication to the citizens of Oklahoma City and the MAPS 3 program. All right, is there a motion to adopt this resolution? So moved. A second? Second. And Lance, I uh, see that uh, you're on Zoom with us. Uh, you have any words of wisdom from your retirement for us? I just wanted to say uh, thank you and that uh, I appreciate this and uh, it's been an honor to, it, to work in the MAPS program in general. And, uh, um, and I really appreciate all the support that the advisory board always gave to us. David and I talked many times how fortunate we were to have such an exceptional group of people that uh, work together for a common cause. And uh, so I certainly uh, appreciated working with all of you and uh, and thank you very much. Thank you, Lance. There's a motion and a second to approve the uh, resolution of recognition. Uh, discussion or comments from uh, board members? Lance, thanks for everything you did. I, I thoroughly enjoyed working with you and, and appreciate you answering all my petty little questions about the finances. Appreciate it. Lance, I think you set the bar really high too and are leaving some big shoes to fill on your department. Best of luck to you and good health. Well, well thank you. Every job I ever left, I'm, I, I was replaced by somebody that was better than me. I'm sure that, that uh, <laughs> I'm sure that that'll happen again, so. Any further comments uh, from, uh, from board members? If not, uh, we will vote on the resolution of uh, recognition for Lance. All those uh, in favor indicate uh, electronically. And Lisa, if you will check with Ms. Morales about her vote. I think Lisa is having some technical issues. Okay. And I will ask uh, Ms. Morales, how do you vote? Yes. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Mark. I'm not seeing a outcome yet from the uh, the voting on prime guy. There we go. There we okay. go. All right. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Lance. Appreciate your uh, being with us uh, today. Thank you. I was sweating that vote. <laughs> <laughs> you did. You did. <laughs> you did well. Let's move to uh, item three on the agenda. Uh, the minutes uh, from the August 27 uh, advisory board meeting. The meeting minutes were in the packet. Uh, is there a motion to uh, approve the minutes? Mark, are we having a problem with PrimeGov where we're not getting the... What do we mean? What do I need to do? Yes, uh, hold on one moment. Okay. Where do you want me? Okay, is there a motion to approve the minutes? It's been moved by uh, Mike Adams, seconded by Nathaniel Harding, that we approve the minutes. Any comments or questions? Any suggested changes to the minutes? Hearing none, if you'll indicate uh, your vote, please. And D, how do you vote? Approve. Okay, the motion is to pass. The minutes uh, are adopted. Thank you. Uh, item four on the agenda uh, is to receive the budget and obligations report as of September 11, uh, and the revenue and expenditure reports for three months of this year. David, you want to cover that briefly with us? Right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This, this and I can just barely hear you. This is kind of our our catch up month. So we have the budget and obligations report of September 11th, but we also have the revenue and expenditure report from June, July, and August. I will go over the, the August report. So for the month, on the revenue side, $164,466. Fiscal year of $340,734 and total of $835,232,678. On the expenditure side for the month, 6,217,938, fiscal year of 11,739,286, and total expenditures of 690,020,530. I'll try to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, David, I don't know if it's just me, but I could barely hear you. Uh, we do have the uh, reports in the in the packet, uh, are, are there any questions to David about the uh, financial reports? Mike Adams, are you okay with everything? Okay with it. thanks. All right, uh, should we receive the report? Is, uh, it's been moved by Zane, seconded by Michael, we receive it. Any further discussion? Hearing none, if you'll go ahead and vote whether we receive the report, please. D. Morales, how do you vote? Approve. All right, that motion is passed. The uh, reports are received. Item five on the agenda is an update uh, on the 1% for art ordinance uh, uh, for the MAPS program. Uh, Randy Marks is with us today, uh, and David or Randy, you want to explain where we are on this? Mr. Chairman, um, there's been, so, hopefully you can hear me better now. Yes, I can. Thank you. Good. Um, I, I found the, the slider to fix. So there's been some questions about uh, the 1% the for art and where we are on various things. So we have, as you said, Randy Marks here from the planning department to give us an update on a kind of an overall view of where we are in all the art. So I'd like to turn it over to Randy. 
Go ahead, Randy. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Mr. Nealon. Thank you, David. Uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you for inviting me today. For the record, I am Randy Marks, Public Art Project Manager, and uh, we have 1% for art projects for MAPS 3 projects in virtually every stage from planning to installation. Next slide, please. At the Bennett Event Center, the sculpture Virga by Cliff Garden Studio is one of those that is in fabrication, but very near installation. Next slide. The 152 foot long sculpture depicts prairie clouds and the meandering of the Canadian River, the historical meandering of the river. And it will hang in the lobby of the Bennett Event Center. Next slide. The lights installed exterior to the sculpture can be programmed and will give a changing light show. Next slide. And next slide. And the next slide. This is one of the cloud sections of the sculpture under construction, which is being done by Metal Arts in, in Utah. They were fabricated by Garden Studio to do the uh, construction. Cliff Garden said this is the most complicated piece that he has ever designed. And um, we think it's gonna be a stunning addition to the Bennett. Next slide, please. Another view of the cloud section. And you can see the intricacy of the uh, of the work that is being done, all of the aluminum rods are, have to be hand bent and that's why there is that jig in place to help create the piece. Next slide. These are some of the river sections that are already completed. The cloud sections are the only ones that remain to be completed. Next slide. More of the uh, river and, the, and an earlier stage of one of the cloud sections and next slide. So this one with an individual in it can give you a better idea of the scale. Next slide. So uh, yes, the installation uh, is uh, scheduled for December 15th and immediately following the physical insta installation of the piece, the programming of the lights will take place. At the convention center, the piece Virtual Sky by Narduli Studio, uh, next slide will be in, uh, parts of it will be in both of the atria of the convention center. And you can see the uh, hanging cables with the titanium rods and the LED lights. This will operate um, as a three-dimensional projection screen so that various images can actually be created within the matrix of this sculpture. Next slide. Uh, this was taken just a few weeks ago as workers were drilling extra holes, believe it or not, in some of the ceiling tiles and installing those tiles so all of those cables can hang correctly uh, down in, into the lobby. Next slide. So our schedule is that the uh, installation will take place from Monday, October 26th through Saturday, November the 7th. And then the team will be in place to do the programming. They're currently in discussions with the IT department at ASM and already planning uh, that programming part of the installation. Next slide. Oh, I, I wanna say before we, we go on, I wanna say special thanks to Jason and Duane of the MAPS team, to Grady Whiteneck of um, Flitco, and to Kevin of Populous uh, for really stepping up and helping us through uh, the manifestation of this particular project. Thank, thank you to, to all of you. Uh, next slide. At Sizzatail Park, um, a piece is yet to be determined. So let's look at the next slide. So this was uh, this is taking flight. The piece that was selected, uh, approved by the Arts Commission, recommended to Council by the Arts Commission, and approved by Council. And uh, planning was was in progress. Fabrication hadn't started, and we found out that uh, something was going to go in on the exactly opposite corner. Next slide. So this is the uh, piece that is going to be installed by the Thunder directly catacorp corner to taking to the uh, to Scissor Tail Park. Uh, we, we, we talked this over with commission with the Arts Commission and the Arts Commission recommended that it wouldn't be wise to have uh, two sculptures with uh, very, very similar motifs directly 
opposite each other, and they recommended that we go back to Studio KCA and allow them to come up with design alternatives for taking flight. So that is where we are in the process. As a matter of fact, just this week, KCA presented two different design concepts to the selection committee. Both of them were really well received and there was a lot of discussion. Uh, the decision will be made by the selection committee uh, within about a month and then that'll go back to the Arts Commission and to City Council again. So we don't have anything to show you just yet, but I think that I can report that uh, there was a, a lot of excitement in that meeting about the, uh, the, about the new designs that uh, will be chosen. Next slide. So it's a question mark, but we'll know soon. Uh, next slide. Out at the Lake Draper Trails, the fourth and final project is underway right now. So uh, Don Narcomy was selected, next slide please, was selected to create a sculptural bench that will go near the trail and in the vicinity of one of the previous pieces that was already installed in the first phase of the art project for the trail, that's B-52, which is out on a peninsula. And um, this will be, the, the bench by Narcomy will be uh, an inviting feature uh, to get people to park their bikes or stop their walking or running, uh, just uh, rest for a moment and be able to take in view. It's really a nice, uh, nice spot among a lot of beautiful spots on the Lake Draper Trail. And uh, this particular project, Parks Department provided a 10 foot log that this uh, bench will be constructed from. Next slide. Also yet to be determined is the second project for Will Rogers Trail, next slide. This is the sculpture, The Wind, which was uh, made available for don donation by Susan Coles. Parks Department particularly wanted to get this piece and the selection committee that included Sue Hooper. Hi, Sue, and thanks for being here. Maybe you've, you've left now, but Sue Hooper was on the selection committee for this. They approved the acquisition of, of uh, the piece, which was donated, didn't cost the city anything. Some of the maps, I mean, excuse me, some of the 1% funds, funds were used for the installation and refurbishment of the wind. It's out there uh, on the trail in a really nice location in a little bend of the trail. Great sight lines from both directions to be able to see this piece. But now we're with the money left over, we'll be uh, doing another project. I've had discussions so far with Russell Pace and with Councilman Cooper about what might be appropriate for the trail. Um, the uh, location will be somewhere in Ward 2. The trail runs uh, through three different wards, but about half of it is in Ward 2, and the second piece will be located somewhere along the trail in Ward 2. Next slide, please. At Wellness Number 2, Family Ties by Nick Bear was delayed by COVID. Next slide, please. This piece will be created with the active involvement of members of Wellness 2. And so uh, the virus shut down the actual uh, fabrication part of this project for a while. Uh, as much work was done online virtually, more design elements were recommended and have been added to the overall design, which we'll get an update on that in just a few weeks. But the actual project of fabricating the piece is going to start in about three weeks at Wellness 2, they'll be using the art room there. Uh, the clay uh, tiles will be rolled out on a slab, cut, and then uh, everything will be assembled into this piece, which will include some painted elements. Next slide, please. At um, Wellness Center number three, we've been having discussions with the design team about where would be some of the best locations for the artwork at the um, at Wellness 3. Next slide. Discussions have, and go ahead and, and advance that a little bit more, Carrie, if you would, please. So this location in the interior would be uh, the heritage wall that is envisioned for the ent entryway. And the next slide. Another possible location would be an ext exterior art screen. 
Uh, we've just found out within the last week that there aren't as uh, many 1% funds as we thought were going to be available. And we'll probably dedicate all of those funds to the heritage wall so that uh, something really exceptional can be done there. We've been doing some research on some uh, innovative and really high impact methods that uh, may be used on this. So these discussions will be continuing. Uh, we'll be talking with Councilwoman Nice and others as we develop the concept for this particular project. So this concludes my report and I will be happy to entertain any questions. Thank you, Randy. Uh, are there any questions from the, the board? I don't have I, a question, I'd just like to I... add that, hey, Randy, thank, thank you for all that you've done. And I really appreciate how you have incorporated the members of the MAPS Advisory Board into the selection committees. It's been a, a blast for me to get to meet all the artists and participate. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Boatwright. It's been a pleasure working with you. Now, I wanted to extend my thanks to you and your team members. Um, I have a feeling that many of us don't realize how much work goes into these projects for art and uh, how important they are. Because as we all know, without art, Earth would just be eh. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lowe. <laughs> and this is a good time for me to give a shout out to Robbie. Uh, Robbie is leading the charge on the scissor tail project as well as others. So we're, we're dividing up the, the MAPS project and other 1% projects. And uh, Robbie's taking the lead on that and uh, really guiding guiding that, uh, that whole process through uh, some changes, I'll say. Any other comments uh, or questions from the board? If not, thanks, Randy. Appreciate all your hard work and uh, for keeping us uh, up to speed on, on what's going on. I think it's exciting for all of us to see this art as it evolves and gets installed in uh, our various projects. And as others have said, it's extremely important to have that art uh, in, enhancing all of the projects that. Uh, that we're doing. Thank you for all your hard work. Thank you, it's a pleasure. Let's move to uh, item six on the agenda, uh, recommending approval of a change order regarding the Bennett Center. David, you wanna give us a quick overview? Yes, sir, thank you. This, this is recommend approval of change order number four, MAPS three Bennett Event Center improvements, a decrease of $5,400, accepting the project and placing the maintenance bond into effect. Project N3-F002G. So if you remember, this is the project that we had at the Bennett Center to, to finish up the loose ends that were out there and some uh, little additional things that as they got into operations, they saw what they needed. The decrease is because there was a footing that was specified for some panels out in that lobby area. And once they demoed the floor, they realized they didn't need the, the footing. So we got a credit back on the project, but they, the contractor has done a, a great job out there and we're ready to accept the project. And this comes up with the approval from the subcommittee. Is there a motion to approve the resolution? Todd's moved its approval. Kim has uh, seconded it. Any questions of David or any discussion? Hearing none, if you will uh, indicate your uh, vote, please. Ms. Morales, this is Lisa. How do you vote? Approve. All right, the motion is passed. The uh, change order recommendation has been approved. It'll go on to the, the council. Item uh, seven on the agenda is a change order regarding the convention center. David? Yes, sir. It's recommend approval of change order number 31, MAPS 3 Convention Center increase of $66,885, project M3-C003. Um, convention Center is under construction. This change order has several items on it, a lot of little things here as we go along trying to finish up the project. 
the largest being some uh, electrical circuits that need to be added that, uh, that supports the fire suppression system that were left out and then some data cable routing modifications in there. Um, everything's going really well out there and this comes with the approval from the subcommittee. Is there a motion to approve the recommendation? Kim has moved that it be approved, seconded by Zane Beltright. Any further discussion, comments, or questions? If not, please indicate your vote. Ms. Morales, how do you vote? Approve. Okay, the motion has passed. Thank you. Uh, item eight on the agenda is a uh, proposed change order on the Whitewater facility. David? Yes, sir, Mr. Vice Chairman. This is recommend approval of change order number two, MAPS three, Whitewater facility, double occupancy surf machine, an increase of $22,041.29, accepting the project and placing the maintenance bond into effect, project M3-R008A. So this is final acceptance of the project. We have Tony Blatt from Hornbeak Blatt Architects um, in the meeting here, and he's got a short presentation here to kind of wrap up and show you how that project turned out. I hope to see all of you out there. Sleeping. So I'd like to turn it over to Tony. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I believe that Karen's starting the screen for us. Uh, this is like Mr. Todd was saying, this is final acceptance of the project of the surf machine project, which is phase one of several projects. Uh, you can go ahead and advance to that next slide because it shows the skyline in the background. It shows the surf machine positioned uh, adjacent to both the River Sports building and the Whitewater Channel, a very high activity spot. Uh, I'm actually on the site this morning because I've got the uh, meeting for the next phase that's uh, starting here just momentarily. And as I was driving up, you can see the surf machine positioned. And as you walk up, you can see the surf machine, you can see the activity around it. This, the, the site is quiet today, but on days whenever I've arrived and it's been active, there's a large crowd that's joined around watching individuals who are surfing. You can uh, advance to the next slide. This is a shot from the northeast looking back towards the river over the top of the rapids channel and at the east side of the river sports building. You can see the tall two story space uh, that's under cover. Uh, that's people will gather there and watch the uh, individuals ride on the surf machine. And in our next phase, we're going to build a second floor within that volume so that individuals can sit, eat, and watch uh, uh, the excitement of the individuals who are riding and uh, at various uh, levels of, of um, competency. Sometimes the, the crashes are as exciting as the writing. Uh, but there's, there's a lot of age groups. Uh, I heard uh, that there was a really old writer earlier in the week. And I know that I've seen writers down around five years old that are writing it. So it's getting a lot of activity. Uh, next slide. This is just right adjacent and in front of uh, the, the surf machine uh, just beside that two-story volume that's undercover. This is the area where the change order added the concrete paving. Uh, it was identified really easily that this is going to be an area where people are going to stand and watch rather than have a, a soft surface. We added concrete paving to this spot. You can advance to the next slide. Uh, this was opening day. This was the ribbon cutting and some of the uh, riders who came out to ride while the uh, ribbon cutting was going on and for that first day. Uh, and you can advance to the next slide and it shows some footage from one of the news channels who is capturing that day. A lot of activity, a lot of excitement. Everybody seems to have fun. It seems to be equally enjoyable to watch as it is to ride. And you can advance to the next slide. So this is the uh, final completion. Uh, substantial completion was achieved on the 21st of August. We accepted the project final in September. Original contract price was $1,964,697,000. And after the initial VE that was pursued uh, with all change orders included, it, the final contract price is $1,864,531,000. So the project was completed at 5.1% under the contract value. 
And I, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions or comments. Thank you, Tony. Any questions or comments from uh, the board? I guess I would add Mike Knopp reported during the uh, uh, Whitewater or the River Subcommittee meeting that the, he was pleased with the amount of use it was getting and, and the activity around there. So that's good. And Tony, I'm intrigued that you've observed people over the age of 40 actually trying to surf on this thing. So uh, for those um, of us who are older, uh, that, maybe, that's encouraging. 78 or something it's reported. So. Yeah. Mr. Knopf's mentioned somebody in their 70s who was riding it. Oh, amazing. I'm not sure I'm that brave, but uh, we will see. Any other uh, questions or comments? Is there a motion to approve? Zane has moved approval. Mike has seconded. If there's no further discussion, would you indicate your vote, please? Ms. Morales, how do you vote? Yes. All right, the uh, motion to rock, recommend approval of that change order is approved. Thank you, Tony, for uh, being with us today and bringing us up to date on that. It's exciting. Thank you very much. Let's move to uh, item nine on the agenda. Any new business, uh, David, that you're aware of? No, sir. Item 10, then uh, subcommittee reports. Is there anyone... Uh, who needs to report on subcommittee activity that we haven't talked about today? I have one item, if I may. Please. Just wanted to remind everyone that this weekend is the one year anniversary of Scissor Tail Park's opening. So um, with that festive moment upon us, uh, Scissor Tail Park has um, programmed another concert for us. Um, if you go to scissortailpark.org, you can see all the details. The concert is Saturday, September 26th. It's on the Live on the Lawn. Um, 8 p.m. Pilgrim will headline the concert along with 9 p.m. John Fulbright. Um, it was supported by Spark Creative, Oklahoma Natural Gas, and Glenna and Richard Tannenbaum. There's a lot of activities happening all weekend down at the park, and I encourage everyone to take some time and spend a little bit of your outdoor activity celebrating this momentous occasion at the park. Thank you, Cam. I, I got an email, as I assume all of us did, uh, earlier asking for uh, people to be extras in some filming that was going on at the, the park. Can you elaborate on that? Uh, they're making a video. Uh, the Gooden Group is to help promote the park more. Um, the email did have uh, Katie's email address on there. If you would like to be an extra in that video, you can reach out to Katie at her email address um, and, and let her know if extras are still available that you'd like to participate. All right. Thank you. Thank Any you. other uh, subcommittee reports? If not, let's move to item uh, 11, uh, an update on the MAPS 3 program. David, anything that we, in addition, we need to know? Well, we just talked about the park. Of course, the park is out, the lower park is out for bid right now, and we have a, a pre-bid meeting today, so that's ongoing. And the, the contractor for the upper park just came back as part of his warranty and, and replaced about 6,000 plants in the park. So if you're out there this weekend, you'll see some new, new plantings. Uh, the senior wellness centers continue in design. Those are all moving along well. Um, convention center is uh, looking incredible. We've, we've got carpet in places. Some of the rooms are, are finished. I sent each of you a uh, advanced notice on a, a video that Gooden Group with ADG and the MAPS office did to show the progress of the convention center. So take a look at that. That'll go public tomorrow. Um, still working on getting some more sidewalks, a designer on for that. And if you noticed also, we've finally got the the panels up on all the streetcar stops. So all that plastic fencing is down and those panels are in. So it's been a lot of work going on uh, behind the scenes and hope that you've noticed it. That's it. 
David, uh, when was the video of the convention center taken? How recent is that? That was taken about a week to 10 days ago. Okay. Do you think there will be any opportunity for the advisory board to, uh, to get a, a socially distanced tour of the convention center? I'll try to make that happen. It's, it's becoming a little easier now that there's, there's not 350 guys out there working right now. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll try to arrange something for you guys to go out and see it. And what's our target uh, completion date and, and a ribbon cutting? Um, one thing that I failed to, to mention on that change order today, we did, ex it does extend the completion date to October 25th. So October 25th will be substantial completion. That'll give them a couple of, or a month to, to finish their punch list. And we're looking at a December, a second week of December ribbon cutting right now, tentatively. Okay. Well, we were getting close. That's exciting. Hard to believe that we've been working two years on that. It just, it's kind of flown by. Any questions of uh, David about uh, the status of projects? I, I want to know how David's 2020 is flying by when I feel like this is like year seven of 2020. <laughs> <laughs> I agree that the year has been slow, but the project seems fast. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Good questions, Cecilia. I think we all feel that way. The year to be forgotten. Any, uh, on item 12 of the agenda, any other uh, comments by the board? Uh, David, anything from, or Mark, anything from staff? Nothing from staff. Mark, do we have any uh, citizen comments? No, we do not. Okay. Okay. Um, before we adjourn, uh, just a final combination to to Sue and uh, to Lance for all their good work. And thank you for being with us uh, uh, today. It's, uh, it's a, certainly a pleasure to, to see you even uh, remotely or virtually. And so I hope you're uh, enjoying your days in Florida. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. All right. I don't think a second is needed. Uh, we are adjourned. Thank you all for attending today. Thank you, everyone.